Hey, everybody. Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is March 5th, and I thought I'd do episode number two on the day today. We've got some new model data information coming in here, and confidence is increasing on an atmospheric river moving towards the state of California as we go on later through this week. Taking a look here at the mid-level water vapor loop, you can see the troughing over western North America. Cold air and snow continue to pump into California. Some thunderstorms, gusty winds as well. But look across Pacific Ocean here. You can see this westerly starting to move across the ocean ocean here and these are at lower latitudes this will extend all the way across the pacific and eventually point itself at california here towards the end of the week so the takeaway from this is we're hoping we don't warm up too fast and we're not dropping too much precipitation all at once when we bring this warmer system in here later this week now taking a look here, just showing you guys, they are just running out of places to put snowfall up here across some of the Sierra Nevada. Some roads are impassable. People, you know, they're kind of trapped in their homes out there. And, you know, you've got people trying to help them out, but it's very difficult. There's just not many more places to put the snowfall out there. As you can see, this emergency vehicle here and how these roads are just getting starting to get narrow and not much place you can put the snowfall out there. And taking a look at this house, you can see the thawing cycle as you go into the daytime here, this thaws and then it refreezes overnight. You get more snow on top of it and now you have to worry about an atmospheric river melting things too quickly it can really cause some localized flooding issues out there now taking a look at this the bay area national weather service are talking about the potential for this flooding event coming in here the confidence increasing flooding is possible and what's uncertain is you know the timing the intensity and the severity of the flooding with this system coming up here so you know monitor the forecast check back here daily i'll break it down for you we'll go over it together and we'll try to keep everybody on the up and up Looking at current hazards now, you can see the winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings, some wind advisories out there right now. We've been talking about that in detail. I'll go over that again tomorrow morning as well. And day one through three, again, I'd probably wait until at least Tuesday before I try to travel, travel across the mountain passes uh, across California, really. And I'd probably wait till Wednesday if I could absolutely avoid it, you know, maybe let the roads get cleared out a bit more across the region there so here we go we're looking at atmospheric river potential here and some of this ar4 strong atmospheric river starting to show up on the central california coastline and you can see moderate from any of the other areas there as well you can see the scale over here one two three four five being the worst and you can really see that uh, anywhere on the coast of california can get some of this action going but it is really focused central and northern california for right now now, what does that mean? So this is integrated vapor transport. That's the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. And that depends on just how much you're moving into the region there. And then the duration also matters. So of course, the longer it hangs out over the area, the more precipitation it can drop, the more melting occurs of the snowpack. So you can see we're getting up towards that strong category here, 48 hours with a pretty good flow of moisture into the region there. Now, taking a look here, this is a GFS hot off the presses 18Z. Trough continues open across Northwest America here, pumping that cold air and the snowfall across the Sierra Nevada. But then the subtropical jet says, hey, can I get involved here, folks? And I want to bring some moisture into the state of California there. And you can see these totals really build up quite quickly here as you go on in through the day Friday into Saturday there. Bit of a break as you go Saturday night into Sunday. But by Monday, another system arrives and then additional systems. This one looking kind of crazy strong there as you go on through the 240 hour range that'll probably change quite a few times here but it just kind of signals this active pattern as you got some troughing over the pacific ocean directing the southwest flow into the state of california so the hope is that some of these storms come in a little bit cooler here and we start keep the mountain snows going versus you know getting too warm and, and dropping too much precipitation at all at once nobody wants to deal with some extreme flooding across the state of california this is the 18Z European. It only goes out 90 hours, but you'll see the model consistency with the European and the GFS. Trough continues here, but then you see the subtropical branch start to move up from the southwest towards the state of California there, and it wants to get involved in the precipitation here and the much warmer air mass moving into the area. This is like the entire Pacific Ocean here. You can see there's Hawaii, there's Japan, here's California to the right. Trough across the region right now, nice cold one, bringing nice snowfall across the area. But then you see, as we talked about in the mid-level water vapor loop, you see these westerlies moving across there. That's the one. That's the southwest winds coming across the Pacific Ocean there. And that's hour 90 on the GFS, on the European, sorry. And this is going to move towards the state of California. So pretty good model agreement on this pattern change coming up here. This is the GFS, 850 millibar, somewhere up towards 5,000 feet. And this is temperature anomaly. So if we put this into motion, you can see this pretty cold air over the region here, but then you see that southwest subtropical jet stream start to move into the region here as we go on in through later this week. 
And again, the hope is we can stay a little bit chillier than what's forecast here and keep things from thawing out too much across some of the higher terrain. But there's going to be some good run-to-run -run disagreement here. We'll look at some of the temperature cross-sections for the Sierra Nevada coming up towards the end of the video as well. This is the GFS Ensemble Mean Precipitable Water, and you'll see the trough open across West Coast North America. And then here comes the Atmospheric River all the way towards the state of California there. That's just the first round. Then we bring another system on its heels there. And this is an ensemble mean, so this is going to be averaged out. But you can see kind of the general tongue of this atmospheric river just kind of lapping at the shoreline of California here as we go on into the extended period. Now looking at the European, this is the 12s. I, I, this is the 18Z, sorry. So this is precipitable water as well, but you can clearly see the same signal there as you go out towards 108 hours. So confidence increasing here, the arrival of this atmospheric river there. And then as we go out a little bit further, that's where that model run ends here. But you can kind of see the general direction of that flow. This is the entire Pacific Ocean here. This is the 18Z European precipitable water. And you can see this kind of aiming right at California there. So just another nice diagram here of the entire Pacific Ocean and how these atmospheric rivers work. Now, here we go. This is kind of an interesting chart here. The GFS accumulated precipitation by type in inches. This is the 18Z run. Uh, pay attention to this one here and the one below it. This is snow versus rain on the top. So this is the precipitation type the precipitation is going to fall in. And you can see there's plenty of rain across the area, but there's also plenty of snow, which is a good thing. Hopefully we can keep that snow building up and not melt things too quick. Now, you'll notice as we go out into the future of these runs here, you can see these additional systems are really dropping a lot of rain, but they're still dropping decent mountain snows. Now, what I'm hoping is that we're not just kicking the can down the road and we're building up the snowpack and then we're going to get another huge atmospheric river at some point, maybe later on in March or even early April, potentially. You know, who knows how this is going to go. But hopefully we can thaw things out gradually across the state of California. This is looking at the GFS, the 18Z. Now, this is total precipitation in inches. So we're just going to play this through here. And you'll see the arrival of the warmer air out of the southwest. Here it comes as we go through the day Thursday. It'll be approaching Friday morning. It's impacting the state here. And big precipitation totals starting to show up as we go through Saturday morning shown there. And then we get additional systems early the following week, midweek, at the end of the week. And you can see some of these precipitation totals are getting kind of crazy here as you go on out through the 16-day period shown there. Some places getting up over 20 inches, if you believe the GFS. I mean, this is a fantasy run, but it just kind of shows you the active pattern that's upcoming here. This is looking at a 16-day anomaly in inches, and we have the scale pegged here for a lot of the state of California. As you can see, it only goes up to this light blue, which is between 5 and 5.5 five and inches above average in precipitation there and, I, and you're looking at that max there at 20 inches so you know the scale is pegged here they need to readjust and calibrate the scale to accommodate for the type of precipitation anomaly coming for the state of california here on in through later mid and later march now this is something i showed this morning as well this is a cross-section Truckee tahoe airport up there and you can see 700 millibars is about 10,000 feet so you can see this um, snow level and the freezing level really rise once you get in towards Thursday there. And we don't want to be dropping a lot of precipitation across the area there at this time because, you know, you're getting some melting going on and some heavy rainfall there could really exacerbate some flooding. And you can get that localized urban flooding too or just the water running down some of those snow-covered roads with the huge, you know, the snows piling up on the side and acts like little rivers that can run into homes and cause stream and river flooding, you know, and cause some really localized damage there across some of the Sierra Nevada. This is Truckee Tahoe Airport, and you can kind of see the trend of this increased precipitation. I showed this 0Z1 this morning, and the, and the 12Z kind of hanging on to that increased precipitation with that next atmospheric river as we go on and towards the end of next week. This is Blue Canyon here, and you look at these ensemble runs, and you're looking at a lot of precipitation in almost every single one of them. So it looks like an active period coming up here. This is not the GFS. This is the European here. So both the European and the GFS say expect a lot of precipitation across a lot of the state of California here as we go through the 10-day-plus period. This is looking at Blue Canyon here cross-section as well, showing that freezing level going up over 10,000 feet briefly there. But it stays fairly high here. Uh, what is that, about Thursday afternoon on in through Monday morning. So hopefully it stays a little bit chillier here versus that. We don't want to see the freezing level go above that much and drop a bunch of precipitation down across the Sierras or really any part of the state of California. 
6 to 10 day precipitation outlook. You can see the above average signal here. This goes on through March 15th, which was updated today. And the 8 to 14 day, the bullseye continues across the state of California coming up here. And there's some good news here. The U.S. monthly drought outlook here. So this is valid for March. We're probably going to get some drought remains, but improves and drought removal likely. So this this tan and this green is good because we're going to improve drought even more across the state of California coming up here. Let's just try to do it without too much flooding as we go. So anyway, yeah, I'll do my briefing tomorrow morning as per usual. Um, we'll talk about this system out here in a little more depth coming up here. And then we'll watch to see what the new model runs bring us as far as what kind of precipitation we can expect. How much are we going to warm up? What are the freezing levels going to be like? You know, And we'll start to look to see what the National Weather Service calls for in terms of flooding potential as well. Yeah, so we'll do that all tomorrow here. Hope you guys are having a good night. I'm going to get some rest, and I'll be back early tomorrow morning to do the forecast and update that, and I'll do my Pacific North weather typical briefing there as well. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good night, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.